today, you're going to have to wish me all very much of luck because we're going to do uh, one of the first live demo of the Microsoft Graph Developer Proxy. And when we say proxy, it means playing with my network capabilities while I'm doing the demo. So we're all crossing fingers that things goes go smooth. I tested it. It should work. But um, if uh, you're losing me, just, I don't know, send a pigeon here or something like that. Um, my name is Sebastian. I am a senior product manager on the Microsoft Graph Developer Experience team. Uh, you might have known me from the past uh, around some capabilities around the Microsoft Graph Toolkit. But today, I want to bring your attention to the Microsoft Graph Developer Proxy that we released a week and a half ago during the European SharePoint conference as, um, I think, a really cool capability for pro developers that are building on top of Microsoft Graph. That is any type of devs from any type of language using uh, using or not using any of the SDKs we provide. Um, so let's start by just going through what is the Microsoft Graph Developer Proxy. The Graph Dev Proxy is a CLI that simulates real-world behaviors of the Microsoft Graph, but locally. How many times have you been building an application that connects to Microsoft Graph, doing all the work on your own developer tenant, seeing all the beautiful pictures and users and having no issues, but when you push that to production, sometimes you're hit by the real world. Throttling might hit you, service issues might hit you. And we want to make sure that you get an understanding of these things are about to happen. And it's normal. We live in a cloud world, and that's the way that the cloud is working. So how can you simulate that? And that's what the graph dev proxy really brings to the table. Because it helps you and improves the quality of your application. Because you hit these issues way, way, way before you used to hit these issues when you were building uh, apps that are landing in production in large tenants. You can have the ability to generate throttling, to generate service errors, and to be able to react to them. So you don't necessarily need to generate a heavy load on Microsoft Graph itself. What you're going to have to do is to use the proxy, simply use the uh, the common line that we provide, and we will be intercepting calls to graph where we're going to generate 429s, where we're going to generate 503s, which are, I would say, two of the most uh, um, common errors we see on graph. But you can also provide your own, um, uh, the own error that you'd like to test against. Um, you'll also be able to provide your own mocks. So when you say, I'm calling this endpoint on graph, you will be able to test with local data. So it means that when we're going to see that query coming in, if you provided a mock for it, we will not be calling graph. We will be returning the data that lives in the mocks folder. Why is that useful? Because now you will be able to test against a very specific uh, scenario, you will be able to always know what's the results that will be coming back from the uh, from graph, and I think it's going to help you building quality in your app. This proxy works on Windows, on Mac, and on Linux. It also works with WSL. That's what I'm going to show um, today, and it's currently in a community preview state. So we're there for feedback. We're there to hear from the community on scenarios that you think you could use to build applications, to really increase the bar when you're building apps with the Microsoft Graph. So we've waited long enough. Let's go, let's do a little bit of a demo here. Um, let's show you a little bit how all of these things can work all together. So let's do this. Let's bring that here and let's start with this. So first, we launched um, a couple of days ago. I invite you to go and read uh, in depth our uh, launch blog post, all the material that uh, sits next to it. Um, I think you're going to uh, definitely learn a lot about the graph dev proxy. I have all the links at the end of the um, uh, presentation. 
so I would say, let's start with this. Like, let's, I would love you to go on and do this. The second thing that I want you to do is to go and look at our repo. So I'm going to do aka.ms slash uh, graph slash proxy. And this is where it might not work. It actually works. I'm happy. Uh, this is where playing with the network is tricky. Um, you're going to see all of our um, developer proxy is an open source project available in the Microsoft Graph organization on GitHub. And you have all the uh, how to's, our manuals, our wiki is super, super, super detailed on all the different scenarios, how, all the different ways that you can use the graph proxy to deliver more quality applications. So it's open source, and this is where we need your feedback. Go in, go into the repo, create issues. We're going to be more than happy to respond and to help with these issues. So now, demo time. Let's go here. I have, let me reload this page here, and let me go here. So what is the, the, the dev proxy? Dev proxy is a CLI. It's installed globally on your machine, and I've done that before joining the call today. And here, you see that we have multiple ways that we can configure our proxy. In this case, we're going to launch the developer proxy on a specific port, which is 8080 in that case. We're going to ask the proxy to generate a failure rate of 50%. So every single request that are coming in is going to have a 50% chance of being treated as a failure, um, either a 429 or a 503. You can actually add your own. In this specific scenario, I'm just going to use a 429. But you could do any type of errors on graph. And we're not going to provide any mocks. So it means that we're going to use graph as our backing store. Um, so when I'm going to run it, the proxy will go in listen mode. It's going to listen to all the, the graph calls that are happening on my machine. And this is where it becomes tricky when you're on a Teams call, because Teams is actually calling graph. So let's see how much of this is working and how much of this is not working. We tested it earlier. It worked great. So we'll see how that goes. Um, so starting this, now it just says that I'm listening. I have it's uh, registered as um, a system-wide proxy on my machine. And now it's listening. So let's go on and let's try to see an example of an app that we built. So we are providing this sample. It's a very simple JavaScript sample. It doesn't just do JavaScript. The proxy is for any language is going to graph. But in this specific scenario, we, we did it as a JavaScript app where you have the ability to test it with or without the Microsoft Graph SDK. We're going to, talk, we're going to start with without, with a very, very raw way to, to get data from Microsoft Graph, and where we're not really handling any errors, any throttling, any whatsoever. So we're expecting this app to potentially, potentially fail, right? So let's go to the without the SDK. Now I'm going to hit this. And now what you're going to see here is first you've seen that the, and we're, we're lucky here because we're in a 50% chance of generating failures. But the first time it hit, we're seeing three things that happened. The first thing is we intercepted that v1.0 slash users request. That's great. It means that the proxy works. Then it also means that the second thing, the green one, is a tip. We see that you're using graph without an SDK. We highly suggest that you use the SDK to handle errors, to uh, be able to pass in your own middlewares, to be able to have all the types, and so on and so forth. So we give you a tip on that query where you can go on and how can you move from the JavaScript from the JavaScript uh, fetch, for example, to the Microsoft Graph JavaScript SDK. And third. We failed a request. We failed a request with a 429. Here it says failed v1 users uh, with too many requests. And here, as you can see, my app is totally broken. My app is not working. Maybe I would have never caught that when I um, develop on a simple developer tenant where there's no load, where I'm the only one developing there. 
Because here, I basically just did a slash, uh, a get on slash users, but might fail sometime. Maybe Azure AD is under load and then it would return a 429. But here you see my app is totally broken. Now, if I reload, it might work. Actually, here you see, and now you see all the requests that came in and that some went through, some did not, some were throttled, some were not throttled. Um, and now you see that my app is kind of half working. I have errors on some images, potentially a 429, or maybe there's no image uh, for that user. So it's working, but it's working potentially half the time. If I do another refresh, here it might take, oh, this time it worked. Here you see we're literally throwing a dice and, and see that's not what I wanted to do. Uh, it Here, bang, it, again, it's broken. So it, it really depends on, 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 on the percentage. It's a great way to do integration testing. And you can even force a 429 by going 100%, for example. All your queries would return a, a, a 429, so that, that way you can test it. Now, if we do the exact same demo with the SDK, going here, now, if I go back here, go down, there was some throttling. It, it, it goes on. It waits for all the calls to be done. So it doesn't mean that this is a great way of building it, but now my app is fully working. I have my all of my pictures that are uh, unavailable that have been replaced by some sort of shimmers or avatars. And now we know that our app is a lot more, will be a lot more successful when we're finally launching this app in a real tenant that it will have tens of thousands of users using my application. Same thing with background processes, same thing with an Azure, or an, uh, an Azure function calling in. Any type of capabilities you want to build could benefit from the graph developer proxy. So let me go back to slide just before I hand it over to you, Vesa. So what's next? A couple of things that we're working on around better cross-platform support. For example, right now um, we're using Enter to end our, our process. Might be more, uh, might be easier to go with a Control C, which is more standard across all the platforms. Um, we're, we want to support hybrid apps also, apps that are calling both, for example, the graph endpoints, but also some. Uh, uh, SharePoint uh, uh, endpoint. So uh, you're going to be able to uh, call in SharePoint with uh, the graph developer proxy and simulate the same type of errors. Um, calling, uh, talking about SharePoint and everything, we're going to also add support for rate limiting headers uh, that SharePoint introduced on uh, on its endpoint. So you're going to be able to, to mock these and to generate failures on these to make sure your app uh, works accordingly. We're also going to add more guidance on the API usage. For example, when you're doing a, a call to the API, for example, on users, and you're not, you do not provide a specific set of properties that you're expecting from Graph, we're going to tell you, you should not be using a, a get without a select. So you should be using it. And it, it will kind of be used as a, an advisor to your, to your development techniques to make sure that you get the full value out of Graph, the best performance possible, the best uh, error management possible. And finally, try it now. You can go on a repo, aka.ms slash graph slash proxy. And if you want to read the announcement, graph slash proxy slash launch. Awesome stuff. So I think there's a lot of excitement, uh, which we can see from the from the reactions and in the chat as well. So really, really cool stuff. Awesome to get this one out. And there's the URLs, which um, and thank you, David, for copying those in the chat as well. Thank you, Seb. Awesome. Cheers.